Hey, this is Jeremy from Production Den. So glad to have you with me on the channel today. Today we're gonna to be talking about recording drums with a MIDI controller or MIDI keyboard. But before we jump into that, I'd love for you to subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell so you can get alerted whenever we have new videos. I don't know about you, but one of the first things that I like to get down in my songs is the drums. I like to put down a solid foundation of drums and bass to help me build my song productions more quickly and make sure that they just feel right from the get-go. We're gonna talk about three different ways that you can record drums using a MIDI keyboard. The first way is to use FPC, which is a native instrument inside of FL Studio. The second way is to use samples. And you can either use samples from a sample pack that you've downloaded or just use the samples that are native to FL Studio. And the third way that we're gonna be talking about is using a third party drum plugin. So this is something like Native Instruments Battery 4 or maybe you have a different VST altogether. I also have a bonus tip for you at the end about some quick inspiration that you can get, but let's jump in. So we've got FPC loaded up here and I have my MIDI keyboard set up and you'll notice that I have the octave button pressed down. It's only pressed down once, and this usually covers everything in this FPC setup. So you'll notice that this one is associated with the kick drum, and these three are the snares, and then these are your hi-hats, and then you have toms here, and then you have some cymbal stuff over here, and then your tambourine is right there. So we're gonna record just a basic kick and snare pattern together. So let's go ahead and get that going. We're in pattern mode right now. We're gonna press R to get the recording started. I have this metronome on. And the other thing that you'll notice is I have this button, which is the blend recording mode. And this is important when you're gonna add other elements from an instrument to a recording that you've already done. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna press R. All right, so I am going to control and click as I bring up the piano roll, and then I'm gonna press control and Q. Let's listen to that real quick and make sure. And then let's grab this one, do the same thing, control and Q. All right, so I just basically did a little bit of quantizing just to make them line up a little bit more. And now what we're gonna do when we go back and record again, we're gonna hit the hi-hats this time. All we have to do is make sure that that blend recording thing is on. I'm gonna play through it once, so we'll press the space bar just to make the pattern go through just to get a feel for it. All right, so then we'll go ahead and record that. All right, so what you'll notice now is that all the hi-hat information is in there as well. And if I go ahead and select all these, I'm actually gonna drag the velocity down. So if I hold down the Alt key, and then I use my mouse scroll wheel when I'm inside of this window, not down here, but inside of here, you'll notice that I can raise and lower all those at the same time. And I'm just gonna lower those down, press R so I can listen back through everything again real quick. And that's a super quick way to get things locked down and knocked out with using FPC and using your MIDI keyboard just to get a quick rhythm down. All right, so for this next scenario, what we're gonna do is actually drag individual samples into the channel rack, and then I'll show you how to program those out with a MIDI controller or a MIDI keyboard. So let's say that you downloaded a sample pack from somewhere. I'm just gonna use this SHD samples. It's a free one that you can get online. I downloaded this a while back. So I'm gonna grab a sample, just drag it up into the channel rack. I like that one. And I like that one. So we have a kick, percussion, and a snare. So as I select the, each one of these with that green box around it, then I'll be able to mess with it on the keyboard. So right now I'm doing the snare, 
And you see how I have it an octave down from where it was the last time. We need to bring the octave back up. So this is the middle C again, and this, none of the octave buttons are lit up. So when I press this, it'll be the normal tone of the snare. But if I want to mess with it, I can if I want to. But I'm just going to keep it at its normal sample pitch, which is this one. And so on this one, we muted out the previous pattern. I'm going to change the pacing on this. So we'll So we'll do a really simple pattern like that. So we're going to go up to a new pattern, which is pattern number two, and we're going to start this new one. So you'll see that we have a blank slate here on the channel rack, and we're going to go ahead and press the R button to get recording. I have the metronome going, and I also have this blend mode recording going, but it, it's not as necessary when you're dealing with individual samples. So for now, let's bring this back up, and then we're going to press R, and we'll get going. All right, so now when I go into the piano roll, if I click on this and then I scale up here, scale this out a little bit so it's a little more noticeable, you'll see that some of them are not quite hitting right on the grid. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna control, hold down control and then click on the key where the particular sample is and I'm gonna press control and Q. And again, that's going just to quantize it really quickly and line it up on the grid for me. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is come back here. I'm gonna turn off the record button, go up to the kick. I don't like that kick, so I'm gonna replace it. All right, so let's play through the sample or play through the pattern really quickly. I'm gonna press the space bar and just decide on what I wanna do for my kick. All right, so I think I'm gonna go with something like that. So we'll press the R button and then it'll be armed for recording now. All right, so now I've laid out the basic pattern. Again, I'm gonna come in here, click in here, and I'm going to control and click on that. And then I will again press that quantize. So now let's listen to what we've got to as far as the beat so far. All right, so then I might just accent the snare with that. So I'm gonna turn the volume down a little bit so it's not too terribly loud. And the other thing I'm gonna do is actually adjust when this hits, cause it's coming in. So I'm gonna shorten that sample start so it hits a little earlier. See if I don't have it on there, it has kind of a delay for when it starts. And you can see that here and then that large peak here. So I'm just pushing that up a little bit. So it's just a little bit quicker when it comes in. So now we'll do the same thing. I'm gonna press the space bar and play through it really quickly and decide where I wanna accent those things. And then I will go back and record it. So let's play through it. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. Press R. All right, so let's say I didn't like a couple of those things in there. I have a choice to either come in here and actually edit out what I didn't like. I could use the pencil tool and edit that to take away the things that I don't like. Or if I wanna do the take again, I could come back out here, make sure that I have that highlighted and I'll just press control X. And what that'll do is just basically cut what I just created out. And then if I go back and hit record again, so the R button, 
I can just go back and re-record it. All right, so I like that a little bit better. So now I will uh, turn off the recording again by pressing R again. And if we go back in here, after you've gotten your bass and your snare down and you start working in percussion and hi-hats, I like to really keep those a little bit off of the grid so I don't go back in and quantize everything because that'll give you a little bit more of a human feel. For this last version of the drums, what we're gonna do is actually bring in battery. So I'm gonna click on the plus button down here I'm going to come down to battery, bring that in, bring that up, and then I'm going to select this concrete garden kit. And for the battery kits, I've noticed as well, you have to kind of go the octave down to get down to the base. And these go a little bit more in order, so you'll see kick, kick, snare, So it just goes in order up the keys, not like the FPC. It has a little bit of a different feel. All right, so for this one, we're gonna set the pacing. Let's just hear where we're at on the pacing. We'll go back here. We've muted out these other patterns that we created. So I'm gonna come back in here. I'm gonna slow this down to maybe 72. All right, so let's go with that. So we're gonna go up to a new pattern. Again, we're doing the same thing. We are going to have the metronome on, make sure the blend recording mode is on, and then we're gonna press R when we're ready to record. All right, so here, let's press R. That got a little wonky at the end. So like I told you before, I'm gonna press Control X to delete that, run, and then I'm gonna go ahead, since I'm already armed for recording still, all I'm gonna do is press the space bar and it will start over again. So I'll have the count in for four, and then I'll go ahead and start recording that. All right, so let's go in here by left clicking on it. And we're gonna scroll down to where we can see it. And then what we're gonna do is shift and control click on each of those. And then I'm gonna press the control and Q to quantize that really quickly. So let's listen to what we have so far. So you can see sometimes that the quantize doesn't work great. Uh, so sometimes you might have to go in and manually shift. I must have been ahead on the time there. All right, so now we have that beat together and then I'm going to bring battery back up and find some other elements that maybe I... All right, so let's play through the beat. Let's see what we've got here. Let's make sure we've gone back to the beginning of this and then we'll record that. And since we have the blend recording mode, it'll just add on top of what we already have here. So let's go ahead and press the R. So again, with the hi-hat patterns, usually I try to leave that a little more loose and then we'll do the same thing. I'll press the R again. We'll come back in here. 
and maybe find some other sounds that we can just kind of add in on top. So I'm going to press the space bar. All right, so I like that. So I'm just going to kind of keep that constantly going in the background. So I'll press R. All right, so then I'm gonna come back in here and one of the things that I noticed, I'm gonna turn off our play through it really quickly. I think these are coming in a little hot. So I'm gonna control and click on that key and actually just pull down all of those so they're a little less in your face. I might do the same thing with the hi-hats. So control and shift and I can click both of those. It'll select just those notes. And then again, I can just bring those down a little bit. Bring that down a little bit. Bring these back up, because that was the other percussion sound, and I actually like that sound. But this will be a way that you can kind of go through and mess with what you've already created, and you can keep building out more intricate drum patterns if you want to. One of the last things that I wanted to show you with FPC was just this extra little thing that I don't think many people know about, which is the score pattern. So if you go under F or underscores FPC drum loops and you come down here, there's just volumes of these different um, MIDI loops for the drum kits. So if you just grab one of these and drag it on here and play it, well, let's go to the pattern. So you can come through here and just get all kinds of crazy ideas. And if you find a couple patterns that you like, you can drag the one on, and if you wanna get a new one, just increase your pattern over here, and then drop a different one on. Well, hopefully it was helpful for you to be able to see a couple of different ways that you can go about recording drums using a MIDI controller. Now, I left it generic enough that this should apply to most MIDI controllers that are out there on the market. If you want to go a little bit more in depth with the specific MIDI controller that I'm using, which is the Akai MPK Mini Mark II, then I have another video which you can look at here, which goes into a little bit more detail about how to set that up. Thanks for hanging out with me again. If you have any comments, leave those in the comment section below and I will see you in the next round.